Welcome back to Requirements Engineering. Today we're going to talk about research topics in Requirements Engineering. So I'm just going to briefly introduce a few of the topics that are currently being talked about and being worked on a lot, just to give you a bit of an overview of what the general range of topics is. And maybe you feel inspired to pursue your own research nugget somewhere in those topics, or maybe you come up with a completely new one. First of all, we can talk about scale. Software systems have been growing a lot, a lot, a lot over the past decades. So do you remember the time when cars did not have a whole lot of software? when you could just take a wrench and like take your car apart. Maybe several wrenches and to be honest, I've never done it myself. But I do remember my dad talking about it. More recent cars, even the ones from by now almost 10 years ago, they have a million lines of code of software in them or more. And so talking about large scale software systems and ultra large scale software systems is a big topic in requirements engineering. How do I deal with millions, literally millions of requirements? If I want to develop a smart home, I have this super system that has about 25 subsystems and each of those subsystems is still complex enough. Say one of it is light management, the other is energy management, third one is thermostat, uh, fourth one is controlling access to the house from the doorbell to the garage to some other access routes. And each of those, again, has a number of subsystems. So if I take all of those requirements together, that makes me end up with a pretty large number. And honestly, a smart home is not even the com most complex system yet that we can think about. If we think about an entire airplane, I already named car earlier, airplane, way larger, way more complex way more security and safety precautions. So we need to find methods that can handle that sheer quantity of requirements. I just said safety and security. Both of those are topics that are being researched independently of scale. So safety, we are automating more and more processes we are relying a lot on embedded systems, on support systems, on decision-making systems to help us take decisions in daily life, to help us keep safe. And so we need those systems to be able to make decisions even with a certain amount of uncertainty. That sounds weird. With a specific amount of uncertainty in there because real life conditions don't always fall exactly in the categories that we predefined. And so safety comes together with fault tolerance. And we need to understand how we can put that into requirements and how we can break that down and refine it and then design it into the systems. Security, now that we are more and more connected with all sorts of devices and we are collecting more and more open and private data, we also come up with a whole range of new security issues a lot of privacy issues, anything that's stored in the cloud. It's always a little iffy to whom belongs the data, when, at which point, by which provider, if I buy which service, if I just store it or if I bought the storage server. So a lot of variables in here. So security is going to remain a big topic. Next, um, we have increased reliance on the environment. And that means I have a lot of sensors that pull information for me that I need to work with. And that includes sensors that embedded systems have, a car that's driving around, an airplane, a smart home. All those types of cyber physical systems work with a lot of sensors. And their data may be precise or imprecise, and I need to make sense of it. And the making sense of it is often done in a self-managed way. So we have a lot of systems that manage themselves that maybe 
use artificial intelligence. And we know artificial intelligence, it's not like all of a sudden we grew a brain out of a computer. Artificial intelligence is essentially a neural network that we have trained using a certain amount of training data to be able to come to conclusions. So it's like we feed it a data set and we tell it for that data set what the 25 conclusions are that we should be drawing out of that. And then when new data comes in from outside that is similar enough to the data the system already knows, it can make decisions accordingly to what it learned before. And so over time, the decision-making process will improve if that neural network is able to learn further. Sorry, back from our little excursion into artificial intelligence to research topics and requirements engineering. So for a system that has an artificial intelligence embedded, we also need to think differently about how do we even write down the requirements for this and how do we organize the information? How do we communicate with stakeholders about this? A lot of interesting subtopics in this one. Another one is globalization. So we have companies that work everywhere around the world, probably on the same product even. We have companies that strategically place their development teams in continents around the globe so that in eight hour work shifts, they can make use of 24 hours by having people around the globe work in, sh in three shifts. And there needs to be a good handover to not royally screw things up. So a lot of communication that needs to be understood in here, often cultural issues, and then simple technical synchronization. What's the best way of doing that? And then one more topic as we've been developing requirements now over many years, and we often don't only develop one version of the software system, but many over the course of years, sometimes months, sometimes years, sometimes decades. And so another big issue is requirements we use. How can I make sure that the work I perform in requirements engineering right now is also still going to serve for the next 10 versions of that same system? It has to do a lot with traceability and a lot with proper documentation with digital curation and is still a broad playground for, for research. What are the right tools to perfect reuse? How can we make it as easy as possible without losing any information or without having silly copy and paste mistakes somewhere in there and then having information that is out of date? So this whole range of research topics and requirements engineering hopefully gives you a good idea of, nope, we haven't fully understood everything yet. There is still a lot out there to explore. And I would be happy to dive a little deeper into that with you.